Hello, welcome everybody. Just getting started. I just check and see where um, my camera set up so you can see my yoga mat. Of course, when I sit down, I can't see where the yoga mat. There we go. It'll be behind us. We are going to move today. So get ready to do that. And give me one second. I'm just going to throw in some microphones because my river is really loud behind me. So give me one moment. Okay, make sure you guys can hear me all right. We're all good. And today is day two of our Ayurveda spa. Yesterday was all about um, kind of we didn't really get past the um, the the lounge of our of our spa experience. We kind of had our spa water. We talked about getting relaxed and letting some things go. Today we are we're going to get some we're getting some movement in. So we're going to go to our first uh, real spa experience beyond the beyond the lounge, so to speak. And um, just make sure I've got everything up here that we need. And so yeah, so that yesterday so we're going to do a little bit more with our circadian rhythms. Last time we kind of talked about it, and today we're going to explore that in a little bit more detail. So just while everybody's popping in, we'll get that together. And pardon me. I'm just going to pop my notes up here so I don't forget anything and we don't, um, I find if I, if I don't have my notes, I tend to babble on and on and then we get, then we get lost in, in our time cycle. So we're going to keep this um, nice and sweet and sharp. So today is all about natural energy boosts. Okay. And we're going to pop over here and adjust our slides. Say welcome to everybody. While you're here, go ahead and, and pop in the chat. What um, oil, did you guys add some oil into your water today? Um, and what oil were you tapping into? That's kind of from our, our yesterday experience is looking at what the different oils did. Um, it can just be like an intuitive kind of going across your citrus oils and what are, what are you picking today? And then you can look at the list, what does it mean? Or you can look at the list as to what, it, what does it mean and, and dive into it from that. Um, so let's Go through that and then I'm gonna find I'm working with two screens. So you'll see me looking off to the side as I advance our slides on this. Okay, so today we're gonna to be talking about some of these rituals um, coming into being, some of these Ayurvedic rituals for our day. We're gonna look at ha some habit triggers to make those little things that we do that make a difference to make them really easy to make us actually remember to do them. And then we're gonna look at how easy it can be both through yoga, so we're gonna do some yoga together and how easy it can be um, through you know, nutrition and looking at that nutritional supports that we have. Okay, so popping in. I'm sorry, I just, oops, it's gotta go between don't have my uh, slides set up to share very easily. Give me one moment. I did this again yesterday. Somehow my computer likes to just lose a screen. I'm not sure if it's because I'm using it from Canva. If Canva is unstable or if I just click on the wrong buttons, which totally could be that as well. All right. Okay, pardon me on that one. So, and as we're doing that, I'm just gonna check our, our chat and see what's going on. Oh, we've got lots of different uh, lemons and, and limes going in there. I did green mandarin this morning was my, was my um, oil of choice. Gotta love that one for just, um, it's kind of a summertime oil for me. It just smelled, it was so fresh and and nice on that one. Okay. I've got a crazy setup in my house today because I had to try to like find a way to um, both have light. We've got like these great big windows in our house, which is great, but it also means I get wonky, like crazy light on um, 
and shadows. So it's like hard to find a space where you, where you guys can can see me in this and and still, sorry, computer's giving me issues here, but you can still see me and uh, I can back up enough that you can see me when we do our yoga together. <laughs> so yeah, all these crazy things. When I film yoga videos out here, I have to um, literally get up at six in the morning. Otherwise the light is too bright, which is a great problem to have, but, um, <laughs> but, yeah, but challenging in its own right. Okay, so we're going to look today at um, at the Dina, at something called the, the Dinacharya. Okay, so yesterday, let me just share this with you guys as well. Okay, sorry, my technology is challenged once again. There we go. So the Dinacharya to me is like this magic unicorn, right? And so the first time I ever heard this word, um, and it was many years after being a yoga teacher. So it's one of those words that we don't really learn. We don't, one of these concepts we don't learn in yoga teacher training, but really it should be in every yoga teacher training because it would really help us um, as yoga teachers to manage your energy a lot better. But it was something I learned. I was doing a business course uh, for yogis. Everyone kept talking and it was pretty intense and you're doing like lots of things and trying to get it all done. And we kept coming talk about their dinacharya and how you know it gave them so much energy it gave them so much focus and it did all these great and wonderful things it's like what is this is it a yoga pose is it a herb kind of thing everybody's taking is it you know a breath a breath work is it a meditation or is it just this magical unicorn thing coming out to be what it turns out the dinacharya when you break it down the dina means day and charya means rituals. So it's just the daily rituals or your daily habits or the things that you do every day. So it's not really that exciting as a unicorn, um, but it does work. It is some of this magic unicorn thing. And you know, when you put these things together, and this is one of the beauties, one of the things I love best about Ayurveda, Ayurveda gets um, pretty technical in some of its stuff, but it can be so simple that it's just the things that we do every day that make this big difference for us, right? And it's all the things that we know, right? Um, a lot of it is not new. It might be just new in terms of how it's arranged. Um, and for me, it gives us some of the background. I'm a why girl. If I know the why we do these things, then I can do it a lot easier. Um, so we're gonna step into this Dinacharya today on that. And one of the things I like this, as we look at this, when we talk daily rituals, we're not looking at making things harder, right? So Ayurvedic route to great health involves two simple steps doing less and being more, right? So we wanna simplify our life. We wanna make it simpler, not harder. So we're gonna look at some of those shirts on your list. And a lot of those shirts on your list shouldn't be there, right? They're not habits for you. They're habits for somebody else, for someone else's body, um, for someone else's you know, time of life where they're, where they're at. Okay, um, oh, before we step into our yoga, this is one before I forget. I have a little cheat sheet, the essential oils for your daily routine. I'm gonna send that out as a follow-up. Um, but it really helps to put the trigger habit reward. So if you have studied habit change with James Clear or Charles Duhigg or any of those um, forefathers of habit change, um, there's this concept when you see something, it reminds you to do something. And then if you have that reward afterward, you're more likely to do it. Right, so it's the mouse in the in the maze type philosophy. It's the training your dog, right? So when your dog, um, we have like the little bell on our on our door when you when you he knows to ring the bell and then he's going to go go outside, right? And that's his kind of reward for that. Or you go out for a walk and he gets back. Your dog goes to his mat. He gets his reward. He gets his treat. Um, so it's kind of treating ourselves like like we would train our dog, right? In terms of what are those triggers that we're going to remember to do the thing, and then how are we going to reward yourself? And this is where um, I had learned this Dinacharya routine um, several years ago and, and um, I actually taught courses and things on it. It got a lot easier once someone introduced me to essential oils. It's just like, oh. And then, so for me, if my essential oils are in the wrong spot, like they are literally scattered around my house. And if they're in the wrong spot, it's like, oh, that's why I didn't get that done. So just this morning, I was stepping in the shower and realized I had these two little bottles and we're gonna use them today. Um, or variations of them today. I had wild orange and I had easier actually in 
my shower. It's like, why are they in my shower? And finally clued in that it's like, oh, we did a big you know, renovation. Somehow they got moved into this spot out of the way. And they used to be like right on my counter in the bathroom. So before I went to bed at night, I remember to put them in my diffuser. I was like, oh, that's why I'm not sleeping as well, right? I don't have that diffuser going beside me. I didn't have that trigger. And so I use those essential oils as the trigger to make you do the thing, to put them in the diffuser so that I sleep better at night. Right. Um, and so that's the reward is that I, that I feel better for that. But there's lots of different ways we can do this. So the one like with your, your lemon water in the morning, it's just sitting it out you know, beside your sink or beside your kitchen sink or wherever that is that you're going to wake up and remember to take your two cups of water. Right. So as soon as you see it there, it triggers that. Uh, within that. So I do have like, I'm going to have my whole citrus selection right, right in my kitchen. So I remember to do that in the morning, kind of before I can hit the toaster or before I can hit any of those things or the coffee machine is a good one before you have your coffee you want to trigger that to do that so i have a nice little cheat sheet to help you to help you get through some of those ones okay and then let's do our our yoga routine i'm going to take the our screen share off but before we do that grab your wild orange peppermint so i've got tangerine peppermint that were handy for me and we're just going to take we're going to set our intention for our little yoga right now. And as we walk through a couple different yoga variations, we'll talk about um, what doshas that they're good for. So take a drop of your uh, wild orange and peppermint just in your hands. Breathe in. You can breathe them in there. And then wild orange is photosensitive. So if you're going out in the bright sunlight, you don't like plaster it all over your heart space today, but you can hide it. Sometimes I'll just hide it under like behind my hair um, back within here, which is like the brainstem area. You can put it on the bottoms of the feet, any of those places where the sun don't shine. Um, so I think feel free to, to give that an extra little rub, but that little boost of peppermint, sometimes I do like one drop of peppermint and like two drops of wild orange because peppermint is a little overpowering in that one. But you'll notice it is that really quick, super um, great boost of energy coming, that vibrancy coming into being. Okay, I'm going to go back into full frame mode. And hopefully you guys can see me. We'll step back and see what I've done to my computer. If you guys can see me going into this. So we're gonna look at a couple different um, yoga variations that we can do. And here I'm gonna just pin my video so that you can see, everybody can see that one in the full frame. Okay, so for the different doshas, there's different types of yoga that's going to be most supportive for you. And it can be even just tapping into whether it's your dosha or what kind of mood or day that you're having, what is prevalent for you in the moment, okay? So for example, in the morning, if you're a kapha, you need to get some, some movement going in your body. So kapha is kind of like that body at rest, stays at rest um, until it gets moving. And then once it gets moving, kaphas are really good. Like once kaphas get a habit into the place, they do it every day. They have no problem getting up in the morning and doing those things, but it takes a little bit to get that momentum going. So same thing with just with your, with your day and your energy. So a kapha um, yoga routine in the morning might be three sun salutations right so we're going to do everything in like one variation of this just to manage our time but a sun salutation is simply like breathing in lifting up towards the sky you guys can do these all with me even if you're not a kappa right breathing out just reaching down towards your toes it's kind of feeling that stretch enjoying that stretch there bending your knees planting your fingers stepping your legs back just feeling that strength through your spine trying to keep your body as straight from your heels to your shoulders and then dropping your knees, swooping up, coming in. I love to do a couple variations on this. I will plant my hands under my shoulders for baby cobra. I will take my hands out wide for the variation. You can move around in that cobra or snake and kind of coming into that childlike aspect of this, but really getting the movement. It doesn't have to be rigid, right? And then planting your hands again under your shoulders, just stretching back through your hips and then coming up into a nice little downward dog, walking your dog, and then walking that all the way back up towards your hands, reaching down to your feet, reaching up to the sun, and then bringing that back to your heart. So just repeating that three times can be a nice, just simple way to start the day, even once, and then go get ready. Once will help, three times you'll notice like a huge difference between the first time you did it and the third time, just in terms of your mobility on that. 
So if you're a Kappa, feel free to like keep going on that one if you like. If you are, uh, let's go to Vada next. So Vadas need help to kind of balance and to focus and bring things all together. They're these lovely creative souls, but have a lot of stuff. And maybe you just have some of those Vada days when you know you have so many things in the to-do list, it's hard to bring them together. So looking at doing a standing pose or a balance pose. So it can be as simple as a tree pose. I gotta find my balance here today. Um, that is really challenging today. Okay, so coming into tree, we'll try that again. And just finding that I'm on a, a carpeted floor. And so it can be a little more challenging to do your balance. That's what I'm gonna blame it on today um, within that, on that carpet. So doing a tree, maybe taking that tree and extending it back, finding my balance here, arms extend out to like a warrior three variation kind of embracing that creativity, embracing all those big wild ideas that you have, and then hugging it all back together as you wrap that leg around, hugging it into an eagle pose. So eagle, you're just drawing your arms, you're crossing your arms, lifting your elbows, wrapping your hands, you're wrapping your leg around. I go through all of these really in detail in the Easy Peasy Morning Yoga program. So if that's something you wanna step into, you'll check out that, I'll send you the link for that one as well. All right, and then just taking that down, we are gonna do this one on both sides just so we're balanced. I'm a little bit rigid on that one, right? I'm uh, feeling that, so finding that space, extending it out wide. And just notice, is one side easier for you to balance on or the other, right? There's all sorts of information on the different sides of our brain and what does that mean and hugging it in nice and tight. Okay, so really good for a Vata or just on those Vata crazy days that we have coming into the fall season, there's going to be a lot of crazy days as we kind of switch into a different routine. If you've got kids and lots of that kind of stuff starting up, that's when you need that, especially to keep yourself focused and to keep all of the, the ducks in the row, so to speak. If you're a Pitta, so we're going to start off with some um, heart openers. So Pittas are going to want to do the sun salutations to get down there and get their flowing, but they have so much momentum already there. Sometimes for a pitta, it's just as simple as opening the heart. So I'm gonna clasp your hands behind, roll your shoulders back, taking those hands down, lifting them up. Just give a nice slow stretch there. For pittas, it's harder to slow down, right? And for vadas, that's the same thing, but just opening up this heart space with that. And then I will encourage you just to do a little crescent stretch just from one side to the other, really opening this space around the heart especially if you do a lot of desk work, if you're that, you know, um, working is your, is your crutch or you tend to overwork a little bit too much at the computer, kind of giving that a nice stretch through there. And then nice deep breath in, deep breath out, just reach down towards your toes. Just come into a little ragdoll, just relax the nervous system. And then bringing it back up come in your, to your hands, to your heart. So just connecting to that heart space is super important for a pit up um, in nature, opening up that space, especially if you're you know, doing lots of sitting and any of those three can be like your go-tos throughout any part of the day, right? So a nice little energy boost, you can have your tomato timer or your Pomodoro timer set and that can be your like five minute, just little reset as you go through that. So, okay can be super, super helpful for that. Okay, how does that feel? And which one did you most connect with as we were doing that? Let's give you guys a moment to think about that and to come back from your mat. I'm gonna try and find my mouse. Whenever it went on my screen here. Yeah, and you can combine them, right? So whether you're looking at that sun salutation and the heart opener, some of the balance things, uh, the stabilizer muscles is what that one's good for as well. Um, peppermint on the neck, especially if you've got some of that, that cooling sensation that it can be really good for some head tension, right? Kind of helps with that one um, as well. It's also one of our key focus oils, right? So peppermint um, is helpful for that. Lemon is another really good one for focus, but again, photosensitive. So you got to watch where we, where we put that one. Okay, I'm just going to share our screen again. 
All right. And then, so this is a couple more, just, you know, oils for yoga practice. Again, I can send this out. There's some of my favorite ones that I like to do and what the, what the meaning is. So as you're setting, so our wild orange peppermint was that energy boost and that abundance and that, and that sense of um, vitality as we start our day um, or, or have that pick me up throughout the day, but there's all sorts of meanings behind whatever oil you, you choose to use on that one. This is a little, just a little energy boost, so a little extra tidbit. So we talked about peppermint being that focus oil and, and lemon can combine them with some frankincense and that is a really good diffuser blend. So what you put in your diffuser can also impact your energy and your mood and your clarity and your focus throughout the day. So that's a huge one um, for me as well. I love to do, to do that and find it makes a huge difference. So just even something as simple as one oil like a lemon, um, is if you need to make decisions, that's the oil to step into. If you've got lots of things happening with that. Frankincense is more grounding, peppermint, so this is a nice little lovely one like that. But all of these things, whether we're doing the yoga and the oils, they are all band-aids if we don't have that basic foundation. Our body needs building blocks, right? It needs something to work with. Oops, I just went backwards instead of forwards. And so with the building blocks, um, we're looking at, you know, what, I mean, this is one of the things that we're actually missing in terms of nutrients in, in our country. And there's actually, I just saw a recent study that had 6.8% of the population had optimal cardiovascular, cardiometabolic health, I guess they call it. And so that's, you know, heart health and metabolic health, which is your, your energy, your insulin levels, and all of that. Diabetes is becoming a, a rampant thing in our society. And so metabolic health is kind of one of those new key buzzwords within that. And so this means that only 7% of people or less than 7% of people are in that optimal range, right? So 97%, 93% of us have either um, issues with blood sugar and insulin levels or have issues with cardiovascular health um, or that you know history of cardiovascular health within the, within the family. So that's pretty alarming stat in terms of what we're going into. It is US stat, but it would be similar numbers in Canada. We, are, we cannot say that we are a healthier country um, anymore. That, is, that has gone by the wayside. And my apologies, I keep, I'm not sure what I'm clicking on there in our slides. And so our food sources just are not the same as they used to be right? An apple is not an apple from 50 years ago. Unfortunately, we don't get a lot of those nutrients. Our soils have been depleted. This is where we look at some of our wild um, eating, you know, uh, things like dandelions. This is why they're so healthy because their tap roots go down deep in the soil, whereas a lot of our other food is going on the surface and doesn't get that support from there. And I need to learn how to use the clicker. Okay, so we've got lots of do um, deficiencies that are coming in. One of the things that I have found most effective, and I eat really healthy. And for years, I said, I don't need supplements because I eat really healthy. And then I tried them and realized what a huge difference that they make in my day. If you have a supplement you like, that's going to be one of the key things to kind of tap into for your energy is being consistent with that supplement. If you have one that you use that you don't notice a difference on, then you want to switch to something that you do. You should feel this. The Ayurveda is all about awareness. It's all about tapping into your body. If you don't take it for one or two days, you should feel it in your body. Otherwise, it's not doing anything for you, right? So find the supplement that you do. Um, notice this is the one that I love to use. Um, it has a micro, um, micronutrients or microvitamin, I guess it is. There's, there's a word for that that's escaping me. Um, and it has the omega-3s and then it has um, an antioxidant support. And those are the three together that really help me um, in my health. They are put together in terms of um, a special like protein mix so that it's not just as simple as isolating. So scientists love to take things in on the lab and isolate them out and figure out what it is. And that's the whole scientific approach is we wanna you know, just change one variable and see what that does. I've just been reading a really fascinating book where they're starting to actually do studies on multivitamins, that's the word I was looking for. Instead of just isolating one particular, whether it's B12 or rhodiola or whatever that one essential ingredient is, they're looking at now um, doing health or doing research on mental health and anxiety and, and overwhelm all of those feelings, anxious feelings, and looking at multivitamins and what that does for them. And it's the vitamin 
It's the whole picture. So we can't just isolate one particular part, but we need several things because one thing will trigger the, you know, creates this piece and then that piece gets built into this piece. So it's kind of this chain reaction of how our, um, all of the elements that we need in our body, whether it's the serotonin or those different, um, you know, estrogen and all those different things that are come into our body, they're made not of one thing, but they're made of a multi multitude of things put together. So it's kind of fascinating that we're starting to, to do that. But the other aspect is, can your body actually absorb it? So, so many times when we isolate things in the laboratory, we're taking apart the pieces and then it's not a whole nutrient. And it's also in an in a aspect that we're not able to absorb like vitamin D, like vitamin D is much better absorbed as a liquid than it is as a solid and all of those different things. How can we maximize that? So they've, the delivery system in this has put it into a, a protein matrix that it gets better absorbed by our body. And once again, we have to go through all of these because I'm not sure what I'm clicking on there. Um, and so this is like the vitamins, what we need to get all those different essentials in there. Um, the omega-3s, this is interesting in this particular mix, They've mixed them with, uh, so they're using marine and, um, and algae uh, um, omega-3 sources. They're using ahi flour, which is a really great um, source of, of different um, essential fatty acids that we need. And then they've mixed it with essential oils for two reasons. One, because these essential oils are really good antioxidant support. And two, because it's a natural um, preservative for the oils. So instead of having to use extra things that our body, that are toxins to preserve it, that our body doesn't need, they're being preserved through the, with the essential oils, which I thought was fascinating and, and interesting how we can use those natural substances to do that, that key function so it has a shelf life without having the preservatives within that. And then, and I apologize, whatever reason, it just wants to go to that fresh page. Let's see if we can get it. And then this is the alpha CRS. This is the um, antioxidant mix. So this is a really key one, especially if you've got um, hormonal um, issues going on. We, what we're looking for is to get rid of the toxins within the body. And this antioxidant support is what does that for us on a daily basis. And so it's got all of those good things and it's whether it's resveratrol and the green tea extract, the pomegranates, the milk thistles, um, basically anything I look for in my Ayurveda text that, we're, that I'm looking to tap into is in uh, one of these three formats within that. Um, turmeric being a, a big one in this one as well. Again, pain and inflammation, um, gut health, our omega-3s are super good for our gut health, our brain health. Um, and then this uh, antioxidant support is a great one for that as well. So that's just, I am sorry, I got one more slide to show you guys and then we'll, and then we'll uh, undo this. A few little you know, tidbits there that we wanna have that, that support coming into being. And then some other little um, things because because our supplements will take a while to build up in your body. That's a long-term solution. We also want to have those quick fixes. Like what can we do right now for your little midday pick-me-ups? And that can be that little peppermint boost that we did. You can add the citrus to that or just peppermint on its own. Peppermint tea to sip that is very you know, soothing digestively, but also gives you that energy boost. So if you um, can switch from your afternoon coffee to peppermint tea, that can be a really helpful one to do on that. Any of these little movement breaks coming in there, even just a movement break for your eyes. So if you just take your eyes and gaze out a window or gaze at the horizon or at a tree, that can be another way to do that. Or those little quick walks in nature can be just quick little things that you can do to do that. Or something called buddy breath. That's one we'll save for another day. But it's using those breaths and using that um, aspect to, to tap into and to boost your energy. All right, let me. Stop our screen share. I can find my. And so tapping into that, what's one thing you're gonna do this afternoon to give you a little energy boost? And what's one thing you're gonna do long-term to start adding into your routine to help you with that? You can unmute and say that, or you can type it into our chat. And then tomorrow I'm gonna to walk through how I love to support people 
with maximizing that energy and minimizing pain, balancing hormones, all of those good things, looking at that whole picture approach with that. And also we have some super relaxing um, facials in store for tomorrow. So get ready for that. We'll have some, I'll send a little notice to what to bring um, for that. Um, but take it, you know, look for that one little midday pick me up that you can do um, that really, really, really help, especially when we have that really strong foundation of support behind us. All right, you guys enjoy your day. I'm gonna stop the, the